there, welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Angie and I'm a chemist who loves makeup. So today we are going to be discussing, aka ranting, about an article from LUK entitled, What are Parabens? The truth about skincare's biggest bad guy. So personally, I feel there's a lot of misinformation in this article and I was not very happy about it. This is just my opinion, my perspective based on my experience and the research I've done. But the main takeaway I hope for you to find by us looking into this, I hope you start to look at these articles with a critical eye in terms of the science presented in them, as well to be very skeptical of marketing that caters to this. So first off, the featured experts that they have in this article. One is a paraben-free brand owner. This is a red flag. Obviously, there's a monetary incentive there from you not wanting to use parabens. And the second one is a health coach and nutritionist. No doctor title as far as I'm aware. And it's not really relevant to the topic at hand in terms of cosmetics. This is not something that we are eating. I'm going to read through a portion of the article and then kind of give you some more information in my opinion on it and that's how we'll go throughout this video. Michelle Scott Lynch, founder of paraben free hair care brand Blue Clemet, says parabens are a type of preservative first introduced in the 1950s. They're used to prolong shelf life in health and beauty products by preventing the growth of mold and bacteria. So actually they've been around since 1923, maybe more prevalent in the 1950s, but they've been around for almost 100 years at this point. Also, they occur naturally. These are in things like blueberries, cucumbers, cherries, onions, and they can also form naturally through the breakdown of certain amino acids in your body. Unfortunately, it's not just a case of looking for contains parabens on the bottle. When it comes to studying the label of your fave serum, the names to look out for are butylparaben, methylparaben, and propylparaben, aka the most commonly found parabens. And these are the most commonly used because they are so small, they are so easy to metabolize. And this is very small, but the way they phrase it does not please me because they act like it seems like it's being hidden from you that there should be a warning that says contains parabens, but parabens aren't dangerous. So there would there would be no reason for such a warning. And these use the common names of these ingredients, parabens. So consumers can see paraben on there. If they use the chemical structure name, then yes, that would be hiding it. But these are not being hidden from you. No one's trying to hide parabens in your products. Parabens allow products to survive for months, even years in our bathroom cabinet. However, when you use these products, they can also enter your body through your skin, explains Tom Oliver, nutritionist and personal trainer. In 2004, a British study found traces of five parabens in the breast tissue of 19 out of 20 women study. The study didn't prove that parabens can cause cancer, but identified that the parabens were able to penetrate the skin and remain in the tissue. So this study is the primary reason, I believe, why people think parabens are unsafe. So let's address this in terms of the article where they say it was found in breast tissue. And it doesn't clarify that they actually found it in breast cancer tumors. The way they phrase it sounds like they just drew 20 people off the street and 19 out of 20 of them had parabens in healthy breast tissue. This is not the case. In fact, this study did not have a control group. They did not have a group of people with healthy breast tissue that they could look at and see if there was parabens in their tube. If they were to look at it, they would also see that there were parabens in healthy breast tissue. So if both healthy and breast cancer tumors have parabens in them, you can't infer that it causes breast cancer. The sheer presence of parabens doesn't indicate that it causes cancer. Correlation does not equal causation. Ice cream sales go up in the summer. Drownings go up in the summer. Eating ice cream causes drowning. No one would believe that and that's the same case here. Also, this study had only 20 people in it. I've seen mascara consumer testing that has had more people in it. I also do not like how this magazine Elle is not linking to these studies. I understand this is for the general lay person, but to make inferences based on the data in the studies and not provide the original study for people to do research on their own, very, very, is very irresponsible in my opinion. I'm gonna leave some resources down below because I feel there's a lot of misinformation out there. So I am providing resources to you that I believe are good resources. Whether or not you think they're credible, that's up to you, but in my opinion, these are what I believe to be credible. Their next point in this is that this nutritionist, says by this study that they can be absorbed by the skin and remain in the tissue. But did it though? Did it? 
We don't know what types of products these people were using or how regularly they were using them. You can't infer based on the study that it gets absorbed through the skin. It could have even been something they consumed. Like I said, a lot of those fruits and veggies have parabens in there. Maybe they eat a lot of those types of foods and maybe that's what's causing it. You can't say that's the method of how it ended up accumulating in this breast cancer tissue. Parabens are believed to disrupt hormone function by mimicking estrogen. Too much estrogen can trigger an increase in breast cell division and growth of tumors, which is why paraben use has been linked to breast cancer and reproductive issues. So this is another inference that was based off of one study which showed levels of mimicking estrogen by parabens, which of course they don't mention that it was performed on rats and therefore cannot give us an adequate understanding of how it affects us as humans. So secondly, the rats in this study were either injected with or ingested very large amounts of parabens, more than you would ever find in your cosmetic products. Not only is this not the way that we would use parabens, we would use them topically, not ingested or injected in us, but it's at such high amounts. Typically in formulas, parabens will be less than 0.1%, even less than 0.05%. So very, very, very teeny amount. Formulators aren't going to use more than necessary because it's going to cost more money and there's just no reason to do it because the more of an ingredient's in there, the more risk someone could have to sensitivity to that ingredient. Plus, butylparaben, which is the biggest molecule out of those three main ones, is shown to be 10,000 times less potent than estradiol. And let's go back to that percentage we talked about. So only in very high amounts does this show any sort of activity and you use a very, very low percentage of it. And on top of that, there's one study that shows it's probably only about 4% that would even get absorbed through your skin anyway. So when you combine all those things, the risk is very inherently low. To counter this study as well, there were also three other studies that showed that it doesn't really have the same effects as estradiol would, in which they could not provide the produced response that you would see with estradiol. Parabens aren't just bad for humans, they impact the environment too. A scientific study reported that parabens have been found for the first time in bodies of marine mammals, reveals Tom. Researchers believe it is likely these parabens come from products we use and are washed into the sewage system and released into the environment. So framing is very, very important in here. They haven't been testing these animals, as far as I know, for paraben content for decades. So to act like this is the first time we've seen this isn't revolutionary. I didn't get tested for high cholesterol until I was 27. That doesn't mean I haven't had high cholesterol for years and years and years before that because I was never tested for it. And again, there are naturally occurring sources of parabens. So we can't say for sure it's through use of personal products that have made their way into these marine mammals. I'm not saying we should forget about it, but I think it's important to not draw definitive conclusions based off of this study. It just means that we need to study it more. And I think that's what a lot of people forget. Don't panic. It's important to note that the percentage of preservative in a formulation is generally very small. It's difficult to say if parabens are categorically bad for us, says Michelle. But there are many other preservatives now available, so it's no longer necessary to use them. Manufacturers are creating new and effective preservatives all the time, so there's a greater choice currently available. Some people assume that paraben-free and natural products are simply not as effective. Paraben is cheap to mass market, explains Tom, but there are so many synthetic free products on the market that are just as effective. I don't see the need of using artificial ingredients, which can cause irritation and stress, especially to sensitive skin type. So like they said, and like I said, the percentage is very, very small in your formulas. But then quickly we go back to, well, there's a lot of preservatives out there and they're making some good and effective ones. So no, no, they're not. In fact, if I were to look at the ingredients list of probably the majority of my cosmetic products, I would estimate like 90% to 95%. They contain phenoxyethanol, which seems to be the most widely used preservative on the market now for cosmetic products. By the same logic, by how widespread it was used, we could start to see this accumulating in certain areas of the body or certain people. I don't know if that's been researched at all. And I'm even starting to see some cosmetic brands cite phenoxyethanol as a harmful ingredient. 
we move from parabens being demonized to phenoxyethanol being demonized. And there actually isn't a lot of effective preservatives being developed from as far as I'm aware, because if you look at the FDA website for recalls, the majority of them are from microbial contamination. So whatever preservative system is being used in those isn't working to keep that formula free of microbial contamination and be safe for the consumer, which is a greater risk in my opinion than the minimal one from parabens. Secondly, you can't just create a new preservative. Some preservative ingredients are being repurposed from other uses as cosmetic ingredients, so they have safety studies behind them, but you can't just make a new preservative out of nowhere. You need safety studies, you need data. If you don't have any data, that doesn't make it more safe than something like parabens, which we have a lot of data for. You can't go from parabens, which have been used for decades, widely studied and generally recognized as safe, to some unknown ingredient that we don't know the safety of. That's inherently a much bigger risk. And lastly, I mentioned, which I'm gonna assume that they use to mean in terms of parabens, is that the nutritionist doesn't see a need for artificial ingredients that could cause skin irritation. Actually, in 2019, parabens won the non-allergen of the year from the American Contact Dermatitis Group. So it would actually be better for sensitive skin. In fact, a lot of these natural ingredients are gonna have a lot more compounds in them that could potentially trigger allergic reactions in people. So when you look at these articles, Make sure you see what the experts' credentials are, see if they prove the studies they're citing, and see if there's any contradictory evidence on the internet to what they are saying in the article. Just be very critical. To learn more about parabens as preservatives, I'm gonna link Jen from the Eco Wells video. She did a very, very thorough video about it. I thought it was great, so I would like to share it with you. And I hope that you learned something new today. If you did, don't forget to click the like button and make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can learn more about the science in your makeup and skincare. And with that, I will see you in my next video.